Good Friday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come together with you again today on social media to share from God's Word. Thank you all for your support in this ministry, as always, as co laborers in Christ. And today, the thought for the day goes to Genesis chapter 10. And as I was going through this chapter of the Bible, you start to see where now the nations are starting to form. You get all these. Hittites, like the Jebusites, the Hivites. We'll see that more and more throughout the Bible. Your origin is here now in Genesis chapter 10. Um, there's a man by the name of Eber in Genesis chapter 10, verse 21. From him come the Hebrews. Um, Genesis chapter 14, verse 13 tells us that Abram, who would later be called Abraham, was the Hebrew. This would be the Jewish people. Uh, so, from Noah's descendants, his children, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, you basically have all the people of the world. Basically, you have the Europeans, the Middle East people, the Far East people, people from Africa coming from these three children. We also read in Genesis chapter 10, verse 25, of a man by the name of Peleg. And with Peleg, it says, in his day, the earth was divided. You see the earth was one continent but after the flood we started to have what we would now have the seven continents the earth shifted the land shifted my friends when we look at the bible we have a lot of what we need to know about the earth and with all due respect to christopher columbus um who said many believe he discovered that the earth was round no thousands of years earlier in isaiah chapter 40 verse 22 we are told that God sits on the top of the circle of the earth. God created the earth round, not Christopher Columbus. In the next chapter, in Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9, with the Tower of Babel, we're going to see why the languages became more and more confused. There was one language with Adam and Eve, the language of love and worship for God. But because of sin, confusion came on the land. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 reminds us that God is not the author of confusion. So with the language confusion coming now with Babel, we see why we have all these different languages. I am American. I'm Italian and Irish, European. I speak English. My wife is from the Dominican Republic. She speaks Spanish. Uh, we live in a country now in America that's becoming more and more diverse with all different languages. We could go right back again to Genesis, Genesis chapter 11. But God is in control of all these things, my friends. Uh, Psalm 115 verse 3 tells us that God is in heaven and he does what pleases him. The rain, the storms, Psalm 148 verse 8 is from God. We're told in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 6, that when you see the storms, it is God visiting us. Recently here in America, we had some really harsh tornadoes uh, that hit the middle uh, part of the country. People died. You see the devastation. And sometimes people will ask, why would God allow this to happen? Other people will say, well, it was Mother Nature. It, was, uh, it wasn't God. Well... It was from God. God is in control. But I can't explain everything in God's mind. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9 tells us that God's ways are much higher than our ways. But these things are all from God. We need to be reminded of what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told us in Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 5. When natural disasters happened in those days, Christ said, don't think these people were any worse than you, but repent, repent or perish. I think what the Lord is telling us is that we need to be prepared to meet God. In the Old Testament book of Amos, Amos chapter 4, verse 12, the minor prophet tells us, be prepared to meet your God. The moral of the story, my friends, today is that God is in control of the weather God is in control of archaeological facts on the earth. Man confuses everything. We need to put our trust and hope in God, trusting that he is sovereign. He knows what's best. I often believe that sometimes God causes and allows things to happen 
like when little children die or uh, a catastrophe happens that we can't understand to take his children home. Psalm 116 verse 15 tells us precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. I believe that it's called like a mercy killing. So I believe that God sees that's what's going to happen in people's lives and what's going to go on. And he wants to bring them home to keep them from pain and any more suffering on this earth. I'm not God. It's just something I, I believe in because of what I read in the word of God and the character of God. But when we look at Genesis chapter 10, my friends, and we see the shifting of the continents with Peleg, and we start to see the formation of the different cultures and people, we can realize that it is God who's in control. As I said before, man confuses everything. Man wants to try to explain everything by his own wisdom. Romans chapter one, verse 22 says, professing to be wise, they became fools. You see, when we try to explain things with our finite minds, we could drive ourselves crazy. And we try to find more and more knowledge as to why things are going on. Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse 18 tells us, with much knowledge comes sor much sorrow. It's better to keep it simple. I remember when I was in the 12-step program for alcohol and drugs many years ago, they used to have a theory called the KISS theory, K-I-S-S, -S, and it stood for keep it simple, stupid. Oftentimes we try to complicate things, try to know too much. It's better to keep your life simple, just trust God, have a childlike faith in the Lord. That's why Christ told us in Matthew chapter 18 that we have to come to him as little children. Suffer not the little children to come to me, for such is the kingdom of God. We come to God like with childlike faith. The little child doesn't complicate things. They simply trust their mommy and daddy to feed them, to clothe them, to tuck them into bed, to make sure they get to school, make sure their homework is done. It's when we get older that we complicate things. But I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will help us to be strong and courageous. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 reminds us that we are to be men. We are to be women. We are to be strong and courageous in a time where there's much fear and anxiety going on in the earth. We are to throw ourselves on the promises of God's word as William Wilberforce. William Wilberforce was born in 1759. He died in 1833 and he was used mightily of God to help free the slaves in, in, in America and in England of his time. And he would say that we ought to throw ourselves onto the promises of God's word. Today, my friends, throw yourself on the promises of God's word. Don't trust in your own wisdom. Don't trust in your own intelligence. Don't trust in politicians and people on TV. Yeah, keep a, a updated what's going on in the world, but don't get too consumed with this world. Remember, James chapter 4, verse 4, reminds us to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. As you hear the motorcycle going by and the noise, that's the world. The world is full of noise. Clear out the noise. Lower the volume of the noise in your life, my friends. Keep your life simple. Trust in God with childlike faith through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. I pray, Lord God, that we'd have a better understanding of creation, uh, the cultures, where everything came from. It comes from Genesis in the beginning. Lord, may we just put our trust in you and your written word, the Bible and the living word, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name I pray. God bless you all.